Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're gonna to be working on these three black pine that I've been growing uh, in the preliminary steps to become exposed root bonsai. We just listed these on bonsify.com if you're interested in picking up some. These are two-year-old Japanese black pines from a commercial seed source and they've been growing in these three by nine Anderson bands on our growing grounds for the last couple of years. These bands have produced some of the most vigorous black pines that I've ever seen at the two year old stage. And so I'm really excited to be working with them. I've already taken a bunch of these out, but I'm gonna give you guys three examples about kind of what the next steps are and how to address the roots that I typically see when I take these out of here. So when these are put in, we, in this batch, I screened the bottom of them because the bands have just like a cross pattern on the bottom. There's a little bit of pumice here in the bottom, which work reasonably well. And this actually contradicts my soil tests that I showed you guys in a different video, but uh, more than one thing works. The intention here was that you stick the young seedling on the top here, and it just has a few roots, not very many and then you you have pumice in the middle here and then a finer blend of soil down here so the idea is that the roots kind of run down through the pumice get little wiggles in them and then end up down here and start dividing these tree bands work really well because you don't get circling roots either at the bottom or very much actually along the sides the roots will kind of go sideways hit the corner and then head straight down which is really advantageous i think for this purpose So there's a number of different strategies that you can use when you're making exposed root Japanese black pines. And this method that I'm showing you right now really gives you control over what the roots look like. So I've kind of shaken out most of the loose granular soil that was in here, and I'm pulling apart any roots that are stuck together at the bottom to kind of give myself a little bit more flexibility. And I'm going to kind of just use a bent nose tweezer here to scrape off the peat moss based soil that was in the plug that the tree was started in before it was put into this container that was just kind of plopped on top and just kind of tease these guys out now as I'm doing this I'm damaging a lot of the roots and I'm not too concerned about the fine feeder roots that are up here near the top what I'm really looking at are these kind of medium sized roots that have a little bit of wood to them and some of them are bigger than others this is probably the biggest one in this particular tree and I'm also looking at the the spread of the roots up in here so as opposed to if we were gonna make a uh, informal upright out of this tree, we would want all of these roots to be exiting the trunk at the same general location, which is the purpose of the ceiling cutting technique. Now from this side, it almost looks like they are, but from this side, there's two higher roots. So if I was gonna make an informal upright out of this, I would cut off these two large higher roots and use the trunk starting from down here uh, upward to become the tree. In the case of an exposed root bonsai, you can actually have the, the roots coming out in all kinds of different patterns. And so if the roots are large and go down as far as the rest of the roots that you want, then you can keep them even if they're not all coming out of one place. In this case, this one is actually only attached to small fine roots that are here kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna take that one off. This other outlier is much stronger and has a longer root that we can use in the exposure composition. So I'm gonna keep that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this same operation to the other two that I have here. Got these all three apart and most of the soil 
combed out of the roots so that I can actually analyze the root structure. So let's start with this one and look at all the different parts of the tree and see what kind of cues it gives us in terms of the design of the tree. I haven't teased all the roots completely apart. What I've done basically is separate these major roots into root clumps so that I can move them relative to each other. With an exposed root bonsai, because the roots actually become the trunk of the tree, we want to have all those roots flow seamlessly into the actual trunk up here that's above where the seed was germinating. We want to actually kind of clump them together so that it looks like you're giving the illusion of taper in your composition. One of the issues that you're going to run into with this technique on these trees is that you're going to have the most roots right here. So it's going to get small to bigger and then it's going to start getting smaller again. That actually will correct itself over time as the trees continue to grow out and create more wood and roots down here. But for now, try not to overly clump the lower part together. Up here is a pre-wired trunk. This was done when the tree was only a year old. So it's already kind of set and I could bend it, but I certainly couldn't get this kind of movement into this at this point because there's too much wood in there. And then I've previously cut off a couple of things here at the one year junction to try to reduce the potential for swelling. But this one, for example, I, I cut back, but didn't actually cut off entirely. So I'm gonna clean these up a little bit to prepare them essentially for wiring the trunk, at least up to this point, because we might use this for a sacrifice branch in some cases, or we might use it as the next section of the trunk in other cases. And I'm gonna clean them up and then we're gonna come back and start on the wiring. Okay, continuing on with the same tree that I was using as the first example before, I've got a piece of three millimeter aluminum wire here that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna start just at the junction of the roots and the actual trunk of the tree. And I've got about half of the wire on either side, so half of the wire sort of headed down in a spiral this way and the other half that way. But it actually looks like I need a little bit more for the roots, so I'm gonna do about maybe two thirds to three quarters uh, because this section for this particular tree doesn't look like it's going to be super useful. So holding the trunk and the wire together with my uh, fingers here, my thumb and my forefinger, middle finger, I am going to try to kind of clump these roots together, particularly right as they are exiting the, the trunk. So you see I made three three tight turns here in order to create basically a cylinder or clump of roots that's slightly expanding. Now, like I mentioned earlier, as you continue to go down here, you, I tend to have a, I have a tendency to try to not further clump the roots. Like, so I'm trying to keep an eye on how big, how wide this is in all different directions, what the diameter is and not have the diameter start to shrink sooner then it absolutely has to. So at this point now I could squish this down to half that size uh, by twisting it. And so just kind of, I just kind of make a coil like that, almost like a cage that the roots are gonna grow through in order to be able to get them all heading in the same direction and then later adding some movement. So then I'll continue with the rest of the wire up the trunk here. So with this style of exposed root and at this stage, what I'm actually trying to do is completely design the finished tree. Now, that can be kind of a challenging thing to do, and just because I'm trying to design the finished tree doesn't mean that I'm, I'm gonna succeed. But what I mean by that is that I have in mind that once I start bending this, the, the overall size of the, of the composition wouldn't change very much. And even though we might grow it out in the long term, it would later be cut back to be the same size that I'm ultimately creating here. So let me just demonstrate rather than talk. So I'm using that three millimeter aluminum wire to create bends in the clump of roots, just like it was a branch. And then I am kind of bringing the foliage portion of the tree down from up high. So I've kind of created an, an upward and then downward and the junction is near the top. Now I could tilt it like this or I could tilt it like this, but that's not 
really important in my mind at the moment. What I'm trying to do is reposition this strong growth lower and leave this weaker growth higher because ultimately I'm probably going to just take all of that off and my tree is going to be based on further branching and whatnot that comes from these small buds in this one. And then this is effectively my trunk line. So that's a, a controlled sort of design process for this tree that gives you relatively predictable result in terms of the shape of the trunk. And a couple of years from now with good growth, this guy will be big enough to, to have exposed root that can make it stand up all by itself. All right, so starting with number two here, so in this case, I am going to take these two large roots that I'm holding in my hand and exclude them from the clump of roots that I'm creating. So I'm gonna to try to just use these roots and I'm not completely straightening, straightening them out, but I'm, I'm straightening them out to the point where they all have to go relatively in the same direction. So, so I've got a clump and then I've got two stray roots heading, heading out away from it. I'm going to take my wire here and and I've taken these two roots they're kind of coming out in the same place here but I've taken them and I've kind of wired them separately so now I've got looks like a maybe I'm starting to make an ent or something like that but uh, it's not really my intention what I'm trying to do is to not just have a single clump like this I'm trying to have some outliers of roots uh, so I'm going to need another piece of wire for the trunk some reason that's making me think of John Travolta I have no idea why all right I've got this uh, wired I've got a wire on the trunk and wire on the clump so I'm going to start with these roots being the, the the larger of the two clumps of roots that I created and I'm just going to kind of create maybe a little bit tighter movement this time and I'm going to sort of take that clump and treat it like it was a piece of a single piece of wood and you can add a little bit of a twist maybe when you're adding a twist, the twist can cause the size of the clump to collapse. So be careful about your, your visual weight of the clump and create something that's sort of interesting. Now, in this case, I'm gonna cut a bunch of these roots a little bit shorter, but let's use this first. So rather than just having one thing here, and I'm not just gonna leave this over here, I'm gonna kind of try to create an interplay between the trunk and roots that's a little bit more complex than what maybe you might first think of if you're making exposed root. So the roots are still sort of the trunk, but maybe we can create a composition where you can't quite later in the, in the life of the tree discern the difference between or the exact point at which the roots started and the, the, or the exact point where the seed was originally. <laughs> All right, well, ultimately, I don't know whether I like that or not, but uh, I think it looks kind of interesting, and that's usually an indication that uh, there's some, some good uh, potential in it for later. So I'm just going to kind of set this aside. So essentially what I've done is bend these roots up to have them become closer to the foliage, uh, and then the trunk is coming out in the middle of the roots rather than at the top, with this sort of weird division right here but then i'm bringing the roots down to harmonize with the rest and like i said i'm going to cut off some of the strong roots down here just to shorten everything to about the same length and once i did that and then set this aside and let's go on to number three so if i took this and just sort of made it into a an exposed root composition this is what people would call a tree on stilts because there's this just kind of awkward movement here in the roots because of the split at the seed germination point here. And so we've got this root going over here that went down one corner of the Anderson band. And then we've got these other roots that are going over to what was another corner. And we've got some roots over here. So from this side, it actually looks okay. But then we've got this thing sticking out like a giant elbow. So when you, when you use this type of root growth and perform this type of an operation to it, I would suggest that you you're trying to harmonize the roots. Now, clumping them together is not the only way that you can do that. So for this example, let's take the 
wire and we're going to wire the trunk and then just that root and see what we can do with it. In this case I have already wired part of the two-year-old growth. I did that on a few of them but didn't get to doing it to all of them. So it's got some nice movement in it. I'm not too concerned and I'll probably just end up using this portion of the wire to bend it over to be a little bit below these buds which are in closer to the roots and therefore better candidates for the final design. There's a teeny tiny little bud there, kind of a medium sized bud here and then an actual branch there. And this is the one year node right here. This is where the seed germinated. So I've got all of these roots that are basically uncontrolled at this point and they all, you know, if I just stick this in a pot and kind of put soil around it, they'll kind of naturally clump together. But this one certainly wouldn't. And so I'm gonna use that wire to bring this one over into alignment with the others. But we still have this sort of flat face here, sort of square. So I'm actually gonna take this clumped root that I made and go around. There are many, many different ways that you can make exposed root trees. Uh, in terms of how you shape the, the roots. So I thought I'd just sort of try these three different these three different ways. And your final composition is not completely limited by the size of the clump of roots that you have right now. In other words, I could take this whole thing and just <clears throat> stick it into the top of this tube like that and grow it for another year and then have more roots to work with in terms of shaping. Or I can stick it further down into the tube and kind of let those roots beef up with a larger basket like this underneath, like I've done here. And I think that is a little bit too clumped right now, but I like the idea of bringing the roots back toward the rest of the composition rather than having them be two sort of separate things with the roots below and just a stick above it. So this kind of gives you some better visual interplay of the two elements. I've taken a slightly shorter Anderson band here that I had already previously used for another exposed root project and drilled a couple holes in it, cut the cross off the bottom, and then strapped it to this larger basket with an additional sort of two thirds full of soil. I generally don't, for exposed root, fill these completely up because when you cut this away to let the soil fall away, then the soil just sort of falls into the basket rather than overflowing all over the place, which means I can do it out in the field. So let me just grab one of these. And as you might imagine, from a horticultural perspective, you know, you, you can't just expose all these roots at once. And that means that I'm going to use this secondary kind of apparatus to create a kind of a angle or structure that allows this tree to return to growing after this somewhat traumatic experience. And this is a good example because in some cases it's very difficult, especially if you have roots that are above a trunk piece, I can't just stick this down in here. So what I'm gonna do is just take some scissors and cut a wedge out of the corner. Now, if you're using like a mesh or an old gallon can, you can essentially do the same thing and just kind of create a hole for the trunk to exit. And the only caveat is that you're trying to get these roots so that you're not exposing too many of them all at once to air. So I can expose a few of them like this because these are relatively large roots. And now all of the important feeder roots are, are contained down inside that this tube that I'm then gonna refill with soil. All right, so I just sort of did a, a loose chop in of some of the same soil that came out of the other tubes and kind of set this up. Basically, all I need to do is water this and then set it out in the field to grow for another year. What I expect to happen is that we're gonna get a big spike of growth from out there, which we don't really care about. The core of the tree will be coming from here and, and or here and any other buds that are in close to the center of the composition. And then ultimately this will just be a sacrifice branch that we use to cut off. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other two using basically the same technique. And then we'll come back and talk about a few of the caveats. <clears throat> so 
So three examples there, and I've got these tucked back into their containers. In this case, I just used the same Anderson bands by cutting off the cross piece on the bottom and flipping them upside down. And uh, the roots in this coming year will run down into the basket here, and then I will go ahead and cut this off and we'll cover that in another video. But some of the caveats that you need to pay attention to in terms of the safety of performing this type of an operation is it should generally be done during a safe repotting window for you. So if you only ever repot trees in early spring because of winter conditions, then you would want to do this type of an operation at that time. And right now as I'm filming this, it is mid-December here in Northern California. And where I keep these, we get very little freezing temperatures or even frost and so the roots will just kind of continue to grow throughout they'll grow slowly throughout the winter and it won't be a problem that i've actually done this during what most people would consider to be winter if you have experience with making exposed root japanese black pine leave everyone a comment below and let us know how you've had success what sort of techniques you've used if you like these videos i hope you keep watching and i hope you enjoyed that see you next time